sitting on dead ready here on election day, November the 4th, 2014. We're looking forward to some real uh, interesting results, and uh, uh, right now I'm scheduling a uh, celebration party for Virgil Kidwell. He may be the first person in uh, Campbell County to be elected uh, House of State Representative as well as a member of the uh, La Follette City Council. So uh, we just don't know exactly where to have uh, Virgil's reunion at. Is victory celebration? His celebration? Mm -hmm. celebration? I mean celebration, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it'd be a reunion also, you know. Yeah, all these, all these voters could get their yeah, reunion, 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 right, couldn't you they? You know, uh, yeah, our reunions go right. That reminds me of old Reggie. Uh, Reggie weighed about 300 pounds and was about 5 foot 8. And wherever there was a reunion, Reggie was there. If there was food, Reggie was there. I think Reggie was kin to every family in Piedmont, North Carolina, because everywhere I went, far and near, Reggie was there. So that's the way Virgil is. Virgil's going to be there, you know. And uh, I looked on the ballot today and I asked a little lady to help me. I said, you mean Virgil's not on the governor's list? He's not running for governor? She said, no, I'm sorry, he's not running for governor. So he missed my vote for governor. You know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, if he gets both positions, I think the city should buy an airplane because, you know, we take a lot of trips to Nashville so we could fly him down and back. So, well, it, yeah, you know, I think that, I think that, that yeah. would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, but now, of course, the guy over at uh, UT got in trouble over his airplane. That's what got him investigated. You right. know, he had his, his girl, his lady friend, was she at uh, Georgia? Or where, where no, Florida. Yeah. You're talking about the guy that sold the piano, are you? I don't know, but anyhow, he's he was the president oh, that of guy. UT. You know yeah. the one top I believe his name was was it Moneymaker? Yeah, yeah or something or like something that. Like he, that. Had, he bought bought all that crap. Four thousand dollars for a grill, didn't he? Well, yeah, and maybe he, more than that. He also uh, uh, he had the uh, a heater put into his closet to where his pants would be the right temperature when he put them on. Now, you know, I think that's a fine idea. I think that's a good use of, of money, tuition money, or whatever for them students to be sure his pants were the right temperature. Right. But what got him in trouble <coughs> is uh, I think they had a twin, twin engine airplane. Beechcraft. Beechcraft, yeah. yeah. And that wasn't getting him down to, I think, Florida fast enough, so he put in a request for a Learjet. So. Whenever he put in the request, there was some news reporter got to investigating it and looking into it. Yeah. And come to find out, uh, they found all this other stuff that the money, yeah, and I believe that barbecue is one of the things, but he, he really knows how to invest the money, keep the economy going and whatever. Well, you know, uh, he just there a little over a year, wasn't he? You right. know, we talk yeah. about uh, politics being so corrupt and devious and everything else. Second in line is the education system. I now you're talking today, about why in the world would they close school on election day? It's why they've always done it. I mean <laughs> the only well, reason I can say is as being Well a I don't I don't have a problem with that Bob. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. What I can't figure out is why they're going to open back up tomorrow. Well, that, no, that's <laughs> true. You know, what point is it, you know, I started several times. There were some uh, political signs that says elect so-and-so. I started to put a big sign up top that says, why? You know, I think everybody ought to ask, ought to ask themselves why they vote for somebody. Well, that's a darn good question. Uh, I've been asking myself that, and I'm I'm starting to come around to uh, believe that I vote instead of voting for someone. I want to start voting against people. Or that's something. all I've done for years. Uh, well, it ain't working out real good though. Never well, run out anybody to 
No, well, I can't vote against look everybody. At it, you say I don't like to vote vote against somebody, but every time you cast a vote for somebody, you have voted against somebody. So. Uh, well, the thing that concerned me this morning, whenever I got to thinking about it, <clears throat> the students, I, I can see they should have had school, even though they didn't have class, because a large, large percentage of the students have gone hungry today. Yeah. Good. I mean, they, they haven't had a, they didn't get breakfast, they didn't get dinner. And maybe even a carry home you with know, them. That, that's one reason they, I think they're going to start having 12 months of school. So the young ones okay. start not during summer? Not for educational purposes, but for nutritional purposes. Well, I think that would be a good idea. Sure do. And then I think uh, the city now is getting Humvees. I think mm -hmm. that what we should do is we should have Meals on Wheels, too. You know, like if they have a snow day, to where? Oh yeah. Well, you know, you know the city could use all those humbies they got out there to deliver meals on wheels to the students when they're out. That's what. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. I knew they got those humbies for some reason. Well, I wonder what kind of mileage a humvee gets. Uh, I'll tell you. They said it's been had one of them two weeks. They hadn't used any gas yet. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> the, nobody, have they, anybody certified to drive it or nobody, whatever? Nobody driven it anymore. Mm -hmm. Is the reason, you know. They're still looking for, uh, you know, if, boy, if there's a need for one, they're sitting on dead ready. Well, are they outfitted with uh, uh, armament and whatever? I, no, no, they don't they have They got any, a paddy wagon. They don't have any 50, 50 caliber or 30 caliber machine guns, you know, or, or any armament at all. They're, uh, I think these were strictly for the uh, bird colonel's wives to drive around. Well, that and I believe the parades. You need a, you need a Humvee or a few in a parade. Right. And I think we need to get a tank. I, I, I don't know why we ain't done got yeah. one. Yeah, I think you we know, need a I tank. Now I want you to, I, I want you fellas to look at these two pictures here. You remember that guy? Yeah, sure do. He's a tank commander, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Politico. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Now you see that? Uh -huh. <laughs> There's a tank. Yeah. What? What good? Is Ain't a, that the same thing now? Yeah. What? What good is a Humvee when you come right down to it? Well, well, for what the things, uh, I don't know what the width is on them, but uh, for mountain rescue, I don't know what you'd use one of them for. Uh, and they got a trailer with it, they got a paddy wagon too. The uh, I've never is, is that the no, it's something else there, but yeah, we uh, got Life Star here somewhere now. If we got a helicopter now, yeah, where is that anyway? Is it uh, did they get this thing built out at the airport? Well, you know, uh, there's going to be some strategic yeah. mm -hmm. changes in things. Did you see what that fella uh, come up with a little fairly inexpensive gizmo that can spot a drone and you shoot him down uh, just like that? No. Yeah, I, I didn't hear all of it. I heard enough of it this morning to know what was going on. But they, they've got a little old laser that will pick up a drone within, I forget how many miles he is. And... Uh, can direct uh, a, a shell huh. to shoot them down. So I think that's very significant, you know. Yeah, we may want to have to start shooting down some Humvees. <laughs> yes, yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, Lordy. Oh, they got them setting up at the police station. They do look good, you know. Uh, but, you know, one of the reasons uh, I never really volunteered to join a fire department anywhere. Everyone I've been associated with, all they had was a bunch of cowboys looking for some uh, mechanized means to get around. You know, whether it was uh, puddle jumpers or fire trucks or four-wheel drive uh, uh, skid steer loaders or whatever it is, you know. All they were wanting was a bunch of toys to be purchased at uh, taxpayers' expense so they'd have something to play with. 
And you know, Bob, I've heard you make a comment several times, and I know what you're talking about, but uh, it was hard for me to kind of put it into context. Context, And that is that the government actually have, they do have money. But the way they get money, they don't, uh, they either print it or take it from the working people. You don't take money from people who are not working. How much? No. No, you don't, uh, you don't take it from them. But... I, I begin to try to figure out what does a politician do? I mean, uh, all he does, in my opinion, a politician, is make rules and spend money. Now, the money he Somebody spends... Somebody else's money. Well, yeah. He don't have any money, but yet, everybody that handles money, if whenever it passes from one to the other to the other or whatever, everybody's hand that goes through keeps a little bit of it. Yeah. That's okay. True. That's called a bureaucratic maze that it has to go through. Okay. Now, back, uh, oh, it's been a while back, Congress passed a rule or a law or something, I don't know, that the politicians, I'm going to say the representatives and the senators, couldn't do insider trading. And then, I don't know whether somebody got to hurting or what, but they turned around and reversed that thing in a few words and turned it around and now they can do their insider trading again somehow well, you, you know that to curry favor with a senator or with a, uh, a bunch of representatives all you got to do is just drop a little hint you need to buy uh, such and such stock uh, before such and such a date uh -huh. and uh, you know uh, they do that oh it was just Three look that I bought yeah, it. Yeah, it's like Hillary. She made a hundred thousand dollars in about six months on cattle or something, didn't she? Yeah, I Is believe that, uh, Hillary. Oh, Hillary. What was it? The old, uh, what's the chicken man's name? Uh, Tyson. Purdue. Purdue. Yeah. Purdue. Uh, turned her on to some stocks. I think she took ten thousand dollars and uh -huh. made a hundred thousand. Yeah, in less yeah. than six months, I believe, yeah. or about six months. Right. Yep. Well, that's uh, if you can make money that way. And of course, if you can give a speech, and I've heard that her and Bill, or Bill, or whatever, I believe she's getting paid more than Bill is, but like 100000 or $200,000 wasn't nothing unusual for a speech. What is it that I'm going to say anyone, can, I can't think of anyone who has enough knowledge that anyone would pay them that kind of money just to make a speech. Maybe Samuel Langhorn Clemens. Well, They'd have to dig him up. Huh? They'd have to dig him up. Uh, well, yeah. But as far as knowledge of anything, a politician uh, uses words. Oh, we got a drone? Yeah. yeah. That's a little drone. He's flying around that light up there. We need but I believe, shoot him down with. I believe that's armed, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you squeeze him, I believe you'd find out. But uh, what is it that a politician does other than use words? And most they use the, their money. Well, but th well, you, that's all they do. It the, you take, they talk you and take, say I or yay or nay. You take locally each of the of the city council members mm -hmm. plus the mayor. If the truth was known, neither one of them would have taken their money and bought that old post office building. Neither Absolutely one of them. Not. Steve Grimm just pawned that thing right off uh, to the city of city of Buffalo. They turned right around and felt like they needed money so bad that to raise the rate at the uh, flea market from three dollars to five dollars per space now, and uh, now they're going to spend. Uh, uh, a bunch of money to attract people to the downtown area and they had the biggest drawing crowd that you could have anywhere they would overpack that city parking lot mm -hmm. for the flea market down there when you had the vendors now they're not going to pack it if you ain't got four or five vendors there but a lot of times you had 50 60 75 vendors in that parking lot and even bring in four, five, six, 
maybe a thousand people a day for mm -hmm. three days and uh, they didn't spend all their money at the flea market they spent it at Smith Hardware, they spent it at Lindsay's, uh, they spent it all up and down uh, Main Street well, here. Also the gas station to get them there. Yeah. And I'd say most of them vehicles were tagged. Yeah. Or whatever else. They, yeah. There was all sorts of spin-offs off of it. But uh, you can price anything out. To, if a person can't make a profit, and time they invest their time and whatever, if they can't make a profit, I uh, see people come down to that flea market, and if they made seven or eight dollars a day, uh huh. And flea marketing is not easy. No, it's uh, not. A lot of times they got to get up before daylight, and in the summer months they got to experience the hot sun and the heat on that pavement. Mm -hmm. If they have two spaces. It was costing them six dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Three spaces cost them nine. Now it costs them fifteen dollars for three spaces. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they didn't make seven, eight dollars over and above the uh, uh, three dollar a space rent. So uh, what they did, they just completely priced themselves out. Now their only hope is, well, maybe uh, the people that own uh, the old. Uh, Kmart building will run them off. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that's their only hope. The yeah. only hope the city's got is somebody will run them off, and they are forced to do business with the city. And uh, really, rather than char even the flea markets are in direct competition with what I do. Right. But I will beg to uh, defend these people because the city has done nothing else. To make it where you can make money here, all of the businesses that they bought in here have been businesses that you spend money at, not businesses that you make money. Mm -hmm. You tell me one business that has come in that the city has ushered in here that leaves more money here than we had when they, before they come. I know what you're saying, Bob. The city, they're always looking for clean money like sales tax is what they're looking for. Oh, no, city, they yeah. like the sales tax, yeah. you know. They don't care that Bojangles hauls all the profit out of town. They don't right. care that Lowe's Hardware hauls all the profit back to North Carolina. They could care less as mm -hmm. long as they get that sales tax money. So mm -hmm. they're willing to sacrifice the well-being of the citizens here in order to pick up that four or five cents on the dollar, whatever the state lets them have. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we're just in a rut. People look at things the wrong way. They should be bringing uh, businesses in here that will create wealth by an assembly of products or the production of a product. Now, just the other day we were talking about uh, they could not get a hold of any Mr. Heaters down at uh, uh, 54444. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you start looking at what you would have to do to start a little old business just to make those little heaters, you're fa 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 faced with uh, uh, obstacles that most people don't even want to have to try uh, to get over. Well, you'd have so many... Uh, product liability things and stuff. You have to sell me to have them start making any money. Yeah. The uh, if you just stop and think about what it takes to go into business, of uh, uh, I, let's say manufacturing any type of business whatsoever. If you were going to go into a business in La Follette, first thing you'd have to do, you'd have to go. Uh, and I don't know whether it would be first or not, but you got to go before the planning commission. And they've got to give you a blessing. And the same way if you're in uh, the county, uh, I don't know what all. I know if you're going to develop property, you have to go before the county planning commission. Uh, starting a business, I'm not sure, but you got to go buy a business license. Uh, if this, the business has to come under OSHA, that means that you have to have a study made of everything you use from your hand wash till 
the toothpaste or whatever else, or even the toilet paper, I guess, inspection, everything has to be inspected. And you must have on record all sorts of uh, paperwork showing what the hazard is and what you do in case somebody drinks it or whatever else or touches it. Uh, there's no end to it. And I would say that most what I call ma and pa operations around here, if OSHA wanted to, they could shut down anybody they want to if they want to come in and shut you down. I don't care if it's a, a drop cord on the floor or well, it's not make, swept you make or a whatever. a sizable contribution uh, to the wrong political party and they'll be right in there on you. I understand. I sure do. Uh, and uh, I heard an example the other day. Somebody was talking about a mining operation somewhere and there was a tree somewhere close I'm on, to the I'm on this show. where they was doing something and this little tree wasn't no, like six no, or eight inches in diameter at the trunk okay, so I, they went I, to move this tree right they was going to cut it down and get it out of their way well first of all they made a mistake of doing anything when an inspector was there and I think what it was that they weren't allowed to cut the tree without they was a certified logger they had to be certified or whatever to cut the tree and Boy, then, am I in trouble. <laughs> well, th this is what I'm talking about, about regulations. Well, they wouldn't let them cut it, but they would allow them to pull it up by the roots. Well, but then, you don't have to whatever a, they pulled it with... You don't have to be a certified root puller? No, but here's the other thing. Your, whatever you connect to it, the cables or whatever, have to be certified that they stand so much pressure or whatever. Okay, now how do you know how much force it takes to pull a tree? You know, some trees got bigger roots. You got to get an expert to come in there and estimate them. Well, to... this is where I'm coming from. Uh, you cannot believe the rules and regulations that are involved in certain, you know, in this little ma and pa operation businesses. Right. So <coughs> who, wants to, who would really want to be in the business? Who would want to start one, uh, let, hire employees? Let me tell you something. And I hope somebody is listening to this and will pass it on. It does not take a supermajority to defund OSHA and the... Uh, MSHA, OSHA, EPA, EPA, you name it. Endangered Species Department, and even the school department uh, ought to be defunded. Just let them stay in existence all they want to, but they won't get any salary. They will not have their rent paid. They will not have anything uh, to work with and see how long they last. See how long they will be a public servant after you do that. Well, I've saw or I've seen some of the paperwork involved in people that go into coal mining, the hmm. surveys and the permits and everything involved and you're talking about a year or two. It's nearly as complicated as trying to build on your transmission shop, ain't it? Yeah, just about as yeah, complicated. Yeah, he, he was up there last night, but I believe, again. This is where our country is going to. Uh, the little fella out here, he can just bend over and kiss his you-know-what goodbye because right. he's not going to make it. Uh, I don't know what the percentage of small businesses that go in. Now, the businesses... I ask a question to somebody who said, what business would you go into? And they say, I'd go into the repo business. So, <laughs> and I'm... And I'm going to go into money laundering myself. Money laundering, there you go. You got a big washing machine? Mm, no. Because but, most of it is dirty, I guess. <sighs> I Where get, are you going to get your product? Well, I, I figured people bring me some. <laughs> they want it washed. Yeah, right through the laundry and send it back. <laughs> uh... Digger Wilson down there. You were talking about Digger Wilson at 562-5444 sells all that propane? 5444, yeah. Hey, Digger, Digger said you bet something. I went down to Digger today and got some propane. And I want to tell you something. This, uh, you know, I don't lie. Man, I might tell it to you two or three different ways, but I will not tell you. Until you get it right. Uh, but uh, I weighed my tank before I carried it down there. And it weighed... 17 pounds. Digger filled it up and I brought it up here and I weighed it and it weighed 
37 pounds. So when you get 20 pounds... Was that a 50 pound tank? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was a 20 pound tank. When you get a 20 pound tank filled at Diggers, you're going to leave there with 20 pounds of propane. And uh, Some uh, places just guarantee you 18, <laughs> don't they? He's got two of my units down there uh, that uh, I hope it's not like that one thing I carried to him. He said, I said you can light it, but I ain't going to light it. <laughs> not in the middle of the road. I told that holler. thing too, and I told that fellow that I said, you need heavy problem with you need to take it down to Digger Wilson and get Digger to light that thing for you. <laughs> Ooh. Five six two five four four four. That's Wilson's propane. Out right in the middle of the road. Right. <laughs> hmm. Let me uh, <clears throat> hit on another subject. Since the uh, county is in the tax raising mood, I've got s curiosities about certain things. <clears throat> the other night on one of the talk shows, they dropped a number of the taxable property in Campbell County was somewhere in excess of $780 million of all the property. Well, see, ours didn't go down when everybody else's did. Well, no, no. The, uh, I'm, I'm curious about something. In this number, uh, there's a an, an intangible whatever or something mineral rights is a taxable uh, commodity or whatever you want to call it thing. Now there's a lot of coal, oil, gas and whatever in Campbell County. It's under the ground and there are being taxes charged for mineral rights. Years ago there was, certain, there was companies come through or whatever and bought the mineral rights in this part of the country. Now, that is a taxable thing. And I'm curious, in this $780 million, if, if uh, mineral rights are included in that. In TVA, the TVA uh, no. retained all of the feasible material possibly found on any land they sold. That is correct. They, and they still, that's in the deeds yep. of any... Uh, and they took a whole bunch of it and sold it back, but those rights are held. Yep. They still hold those rights, especially uranium. Uh, but I'm curious as to whether this is included in this total I value. I would now, not think so. Okay. I wouldn't because the, I they would collect. think really if a proper assessment was made of the coal deposits from this ridge of mountain that runs here all the way through Harrogate, that probably just that ridge of mountains probably would have that much. Uh, well, it, it ain't worth nothing if you can't sell it. Huh? It ain't worth nothing if you well, can't I sell it. Well, I understand that now. That's the reason they charge a separation tax. Yeah. When it's brought out. Severance. Yeah. A severance tax. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, but, if I'm not mistaken, the county is collecting taxes on mineral rights. Before it's come out, right? If it's under the, if it's under there, it's my understanding that it is valued, because it is something of value, and whenever you, if you yeah, obtain, see, you would have to have a proven uh, amount on there before they could tax, tax it. So if you say, okay. hey, there's gold in them there hills, and we gonna tax it at such and such and what? Well, we ain't never found no gold, but there's gold in them there hills. And we're going to tax it. Now, I don't think without having a proven uh, uh, mayor of coal to be able to determine the amount of coal, I don't see no way they can tax it before it comes out of the ground. Okay, let me ask you a question now. This is a places, there are places that if you have <coughs> a piece of property that has a view. Yep. Has what? A view. Let's say that, yeah. you can be taxed for that view. Well, don't they tax actually, blind people? Actually, well, that's a good point. Can you tax a blind actually, person? Actually, what should happen 
is that the lot will if you ought to bring more money and thereby you'll be paying more taxes on it, okay? Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna bring well, they more do money. that too. Huh? Uh -huh. They do that too and then okay. they tax yeah, you for the view. That. They yeah, get you I a double that. lick. Yeah. yeah, I know that. But minerals like I say, years ago they there tax were you on how much water you catch too. Yeah, but see they bought mineral rights whether there's any under there or not. Yep. That's right. But th and by, an undetermined amount. But by doing so, they placed a value on it. <clears throat> Due to the fact that they... Well, back then, what they pay? 20 cents an acre? Okay. Uh, well, I don't know what, the, what it was. But now, the value of that is quite a bit higher. Well, uh, it's not proven on there. Coal. Ain't not on coal. And then, okay, now there, let, wait, there, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gas wait a minute. well in Campbell County. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's several gas wells in Campbell County and oil wells or whatever. Uh, you don't hear much about it, and the activity the wells have been drilled here and capped off. Uh, as a matter I'm of fact, about a producing well. Yeah, let's see. I know there's several in Claiborne County. I didn't say Claiborne. Uh, yeah, there County. was, and let don't me know think. I pumping any in Campbell County or not. I don't know if they are or not. But, I don't either. But, Maybe, but. But they have been drilled. No, the no. wells are drilled and capped off. Across the lake from my house, there one time people got aggravated. They could, couldn't dig a well, get them water, they kept getting oil. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't even know where it's at. I just know in the general area and when it was going on. But then people tried. Well, tried let me. Kept trying to dig them away and kept getting a damn dull oil in let, it. Let me go back to this. I ran into a situation somewhere, and I can't put my thumb on it right now. A piece of property, and it stated, and I can't name the names or whatever, it stated that the uh, property. The mineral rights were held by a certain company, valued at a certain value, and that they paid taxes to Campbell County on that value. That they were paying Campbell County taxes for the value of whatever they said on that, and it was a, it maybe, was a healthy maybe, amount. You know, uh, I don't know who's going to set the value. You know, uh, for these things. Uh. Well, I don't either, and uh, that's beside the point. The point I'm trying to make is, is the question that I'm asking is in this $700 million, $780, is this part of that figure? And now you take like, uh, if you've got a business out here and you have X much of equipment, you're charged an ad valorem tax on the value of that equipment. And you're not taxed at the 25%. My understanding is, and from what I've seen, and I looked at some records the other day, I believe you're paying at a 40% rate instead of Maybe. 25 on equipment. Maybe. So my question is, in this $780 million, is this included in that also? Instead of, or is this just land values? Well, you know, I don't think it would, because I would hope that the land in Campbell County would be worth uh, uh, as much as Oprah Winfrey. Well, you, you lost me there. Well, Oprah Winfrey is worth over a billion. So you're saying that 780 million, that's not even a billion dollars that the Campbell County is worth. You got people that could write a check for that. But the question I'm asking is, is this 780, if that includes these other items that I'm talking about, if that's included in the value or not. And I have no idea because uh, you take my little acreage, I don't think there's any tax on it, and it's probably got some minerals down under it. Of course, but you, you might have to uh, drill into China to get it. But uh, Well, where I'm coming from is I'm trying to figure out is if the county is receiving revenue that we're not being we're not aware of. And there's another thing, and that's the hall tax. 
I understand that. 6%. Okay. This goes to the state. How much percent? 6%. Okay. And then the state keeps 2 or 3% of it or whatever, 2 or 3 cents of it, excuse me. And then they send the remainder of it back to the county or the municipality. Right. And I'm wondering is if this part that comes back, where does it go to? Does it go to the general Very fund? Good. Where does it go? Where does this money off the hall tax and it comes back and I'm curious as if it's distributed. It should go into the general fund. I don't it think should. it's designated for any special cause. Well, these are questions that I'm curious about. Well, these are questions that need to be answered and there should be a transparency uh, of uh, income to the county as well as a transparency on what's being paid out. So, mm -hmm. as I've always said, and Ronnie also, that uh, they ought to just publish the uh, checks that are written uh, on the computer and let everybody look them up. It'd be simple. It'd be very simple for the county. Uh, I don't. What 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 would the what would be the office? Well, it'd be the finance office, wouldn't it? That does what? That writes the checks. Mm -hmm. Finance. No, wait a minute yeah. now. Oh yeah, finance office. But what they do? Do they uh, just send a lump sum or allocate a, a certain amount to each department per month? Or I don't know well, how they do. Each that. department has a budget. However, when uh, say they're going to build something out here to dump, uh, the bid comes into the finance office. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, uh, one of the Marlowe's is supposed to be very expertise in this sort of thing and know what it should really cost. But Jeff writes the checks and he writes it on, uh, uh, say it's a $10,000 bid. Uh, well, once he spends the $10,000, he just keeps on writing checks on, uh, I forget what they call that, on uh, uh, redoing some of it, you know. A lot of times, uh, the ten thousand dollar expenditure becomes a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar expenditure. That's what you call change orders, isn't it? Huh? Change orders. Yeah, these change orders. Yeah. Right. The uh, now there's another subject. Is uh, the Marlowe who was the county commissioner who became uh, Stan Stan Marlowe? Okay, he became the some sort of an inspector. or or whatever, as the county, I don't know what I, I don't, what you would yeah, call him. Jeff's office, he's supposed to make sure that uh, when something is put up uh, to be done, that it's feasible to do it, and that, that it can be done within uh, the specified amount that they've requested. And also, I, I think that's what his job was supposed to be. And also by code or whatever else and all that stuff, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But now... That was a position that was created for Stan. Okay. Now, Stan's been moved to another. Now, he's not in that position now, is my understanding, that he's been relocated to another position. Well, you know, <coughs> once you get a job, you're in for life. Okay. Unless you're over the garbage and they fire them every few days. Okay. If he's been moved from that position... Then who has taken that position uh, you're now? You're under pretty good authority. We're getting a new clerk master first of the year. I wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Surprises but, me because it's going out of the family. Well, they probably moved Stan Fowles really? into it, you know. Well, yeah, it's been an archer or a beard since the creation of the world. Okay, now that position is filled by... Uh, State legislature. Mm. But isn't it recommended by the judge? Probably. Uh, would uh, the chancery judge makes the recommendation or something like I've that? I've been told that. Okay. I see. If I'm not mistaken, that's a pretty lucrative position, isn't it? Well, it's a lifetime appointment. Right. You get a commission it, off everything that turns. Uh, right. You get a commission off of uh, whatever goes through there. 
Okay. All your foreclosures and everything else. What okay, you don't and know. estates also. Huh? Isn't it? All of the estates. Don't estates go through that if there's not right. a will and whatever right. and so forth. Well, uh, anyhow, it's a lot of useless trivia, gentlemen. Let me let me bring up another useless trivia <clears throat> thing. Now, I read this a uh, couple, two or three weeks ago. Down at Oak Ridge, they got the, what's called the SNS Splectration Neutron Splitter or something. Okay. Okay. This thing it went online back a few years ago and run for a pretty good while. And it's got a thing in there called a target. And my understanding is this thing is made out of stainless steel plus mercury. And what? this stainless steel plus what? Mercury. And I don't know whether the mercury is inside, contained, or whatever. But this thing has like 20 tons of mercury in this target. And the last... No, I know what you're talking about. Okay, you know what I'm talking about now? Mm -hmm. Okay, this thing, uh, they've had a problem with it. Somehow, they're getting holes in this target, and which is expected because they keep two or three of them made up. Uh, but the last couple of them I hear that they've put in from my reading, <coughs> they've had trouble with them. And they fired this thing up, and they, they stated it in a kind of a weird way. They timed it through kilowatts used or something. But I believe the, they shut down because it was having a problem. I think it was a leak from what I understand. They was down for a few weeks, got it fired back up, got it back online, <coughs> and then in like a week it, it went down again. They had to shut yeah, it down. I heard that, yeah. Okay. Now I believe they've got one more target left. And it, it's going to be like up into March of next year before they'll have a, another spare target made or completed. But what anyhow, are they trying to do? They're trying to uh, shoot an atom somehow and split a neutron off of it. And they use these neutrons in experiments. And the way I read this thing, and I don't know all the technology of it or the, ver the vocabulary of it, but anyhow, the end result is that all these uh, scientists and whatever from all over the world come here somehow, and I don't know what it has, to, it has something to do with this neutron that they split off this thing. And they use it for all sorts of things in experiments. Right. And I don't know. Mm, get me with them neutrons. Well, well, you going to get you a neutron? It has. Okay, go ahead. You know, while we were uh, discovering all those things as a result of this uh, uh, system we got over there, you know, I discovered something yesterday, rediscovered something yesterday. One of the best kept secrets in La Pollock or Campbell County. And there's a little place up there on the corner of Old Jack Bear Pike and Central Avenue called Napa. Napa is a local business, best kept secret around. You can go down to, I'm going to call their name Advance or AutoZone uh, or uh, uh, O'Reilly's or wherever, and they've got lost leaders that they put out where you think they're cheaper. But if I need a spark plug for a lawnmower, go up and buy one for $2 flat. Go down there, want three dollars up for a lawnmower. Uh, and they don't make a difference it's flat Napa or not, does it? It's run by Randy Spradlin, I believe is his name, last name. I was calling him Randy. They got the best prices, they got the most knowledge available to help you get what you want. And if you ever notice who is in there mainly, it's people who know what's going on. And, uh, so if you need something I need to see what's going on too. or for your farming all tractor, you go on up there to uh, Napa Auto Parts right on the corner of Jacksboro uh, Pike and Old Jacksboro Pike and go in there and see if they cannot fix you up. The best buyer you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. Those fellas. When did they come back on board? Yesterday.
those fellows that will amaze you. If you go in there looking for something, they, if never, they can't get, if they don't have it, they can sure get it well, for you, you know, in a hurry. You know what? You know why Randy and them came back? He found out people were buying up there in spite of us advertising for them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a starter over there for a forklift, um, an old model Toyota forklift. I went up there and got it, and uh, it was about fifty bucks with a. Fifteen dollar core charge. I paid the core charge and, and kept the old starter on there for another six months, and uh, finally got around to changing. Took it up there and got me fifteen dollars. Yeah. Well, I told him I was going to do that, and he said that's all right. But now, you think about it. You don't just walk into some of these high polluting places and get a starter for a nineteen seventy one Toyota forklift. <laughs> No, they didn't well, they, have it in stock. It took crank. two days to get it. The day I was there and the day I went after it. Yeah. I thought those were crank operated vehicles. Well, I've got some of them too. <laughs> you know, they don't crank them their vital care ambulances, do they? They don't have to. They keep them in a warm bay. Like that guy's if, britches over there. If they, if they get a call. Oh, yeah. They get a call. They're sitting on dead ready to go. They got the most modern equipment. They have uh, people who are well trained, and above all, they have dedication to do a good job in what they're doing. And uh, it, to them, if you don't like the services, you ain't gonna get to, they're not gonna get your business again. And if they don't get you to the hospital in time, uh, then they got a different type of vehicle that'll come and get you. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I'm well aware of what uh, bottle care could do because I have been transported uh, from my home uh, to the hospital in pretty bad condition. And uh, so I know that they do what the city's going to do. It's 562-9370. Uh, and uh, if you, if you want to call that or you can call 911 and tell them you want bottle care and they'll come and pick you up independently owned, uh, does not cost the taxpayers of this county one cent for vital care to operate their vehicles and their business. You ought to go by and see what they've done with that old rescue building over there. They picked it up real, real nice, looked sharp, got three or four bays, I forget exactly how many bays they got, and uh, uh, they're sitting on dead ready in warm weather, they're sitting there with that truck warmed up, ready to go, and they make sure all the headlights are burning too before they leave. That's vital care. 562-9370. Yep. That's more important. That's the mm -hmm. Works every time. Mm -hmm. Well, fellas, the part of the useless trivia on this uh, neutron splitter and the 20 tons of uh, mercury it also stated that one gram, yeah, well, this was in another article that kind of fed up this thing or whatever, but one gram of mercury will pollute 132,000 gallons of water. So if you compare one gram as to 20 ton, which I don't foresee of them well, losing I, I it. I would tell you, you know, it, yeah, just but, a minute, roughly how much that is because... Uh, on a toy ounce, there are 31 grams uh, to the ounce. On an ounce like we count ounces, there's 28 uh -huh. uh, grams to the ounce. So, uh, so a gram How is a very... How would that much water? It don't... I don't know. It, don't, it stays together. Well, it doesn't heaven, separate. You know, that it's not water soluble. To put a gram of, uh, of uh, mercury and 132,000 gallons of water. Do you know that we have over 400 parts to a million of, uh, of uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? That's 400 parts to a million. And yet, huh? we're going to die from it. That's the... 400 parts per million is the limit of well, sediment. let me tell you fellas something. Mm -hmm. When TVA was building the dam, they had some springs that sank. 
And, uh, you know, the, they didn't know where it went to. He'd run the ground, and they were going to back a lake up over it. And they wanted to know where that water come out because they didn't want to put the lake in there and it all end up in Chattanooga another way. Just, mm -hmm. So they... Or in New Georgia. Yeah. So what <laughs> they done, they hired these guys to go around and sit at these springs and watch to see if any mercury come out. And then they hired these other guys to take barrels of mercury and pour in them sinking springs. And they done that all over the country. Well, mm. I had a man who was a witness to that lake being born and that area before the lake. And he told me 15 years ago that every once in a while, out of those springs, there would just be a glob of mercury to yeah. come out and it would roll down the stream. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. probably the way mercury raised, weighed probably five to a hundred to a thousand yeah. pounds of mercury. We yeah. just it just spit it out every once in a while. Yeah. So uh, where it's trapped somewhere, uh, it's trapped somewhere in a cave, and well, it comes it, loose. Well, I guess the pressure of the lake keeps it down now. I mm -hmm. had to fill up the, the low spots. You know, you pour it in there, and it fills up the cracks. And when it gets crack filled, it goes on, starts on the next, and then you get enough in there, it's got a road all the way down there where it runs out. Uh huh. And well, you can see where it come out at. Well, I tell you. It's so dangerous, even the name of mercury caused Ford Motor Company to stop producing them. <laughs> well, I can okay. That. Yeah. The, uh, where, I've never researched to see, but what is mercury? Uh, is it a natural or is it yeah. man made? It is, is it an element. It's an element, well, just like lead. Where does, uh, that means if it being if it being a uh, and it has to be in the earth somewhere. Mm -hmm. How was it formed? Well, the same way, uh, iron and lead and carbon. I, I know. I, I'm back up. Let me back up and say, I, it just dawned on me where that I picked up on this pollution thing, and it had nothing to do with what I'm talking about here. There's a a uh, a uh, place in Knoxville, a business, they call it uh, something to other parts. Where you take apart, pull, it's like pull, a junkyard. Pull, pull apart. Pull apart. Pull apart. Mm. Okay. Yeah. They have a couple locations, different places, but what they're doing, they're capturing the mercury switches out of the trunk lids and the hoods or whatever vehicles. That was the big thing, you know, years ago. When you open your trunk lid, your trunk light comes on. And that was due to a mercury switch. Same yeah. as... Uh, uh, thermostat in your house or whatever else but they had uh, collected some of these and won an award for collecting so many of them uh, in their doings but that's where I got the statistic of to how much pollution a gram would do now uh, I had an uncle years ago who worked at Oak Ridge in the infrastructure part, lines and stuff like that. And he stated that they would was putting in underground lines and said they was digging with a backhoe. And he said when they'd stop for dinner and they came back after lunch or whatever, where the backhoe teeth had made marks in the ground, that those marks would be standing full of mercury. Yeah. So, well, to keep you, to keep your teeth on your back hole clean. Well, uh, that stuff worth money. I'm sorry. That stuff worth money. Well, I'm sure it is. If they're using 20 tons of it in a target, uh, I'd be curious as they to how it. they mine it or process it or whatever. How do they recover it from the earth? I don't know. They use it to float. Uh, Highly sensitive technical equipment. You know, you can float. You can use it to float and it'll be level. Yeah, but see, right. you never looked on the positive side of this. Just look at how many uh, gallons of water have been uncontaminated by putting all that mercury over there at Oak Ridge. Uncontaminated? Yeah. Got other that's decontaminated. Oh, oh, well, that's a good way of looking at it, I guess. 
At least you know but where it's at. Got hemmed up. The uh, it's it's interesting to uh, as to where it is processed. It's kind of like uh, the deposits of uranium. Uh, you don't see very much about the mining of uranium. Uh, up in, uh, it's either Virginia or West Virginia, has one of the uh, uh, richest deposits of uranium that we're aware of in the United States. And they've placed a moratorium on the uh, mining of it because uh, I guess it's such potent stuff that they don't know how to Man. to protect the people working in right. it. Right. And I've done some reading about uh, and trying to get a little understanding as to how uh, the first processing of it is they, my understanding is it's like in limestone or whatever. Mercury occurs in deposits throughout the world mostly as cinnabar, mercury sulfide. The red pigment vermilion, a pretty form of a pure form of mercury sulfide is mostly obtained by reaction of mercury with sulfur. Mercury poison can result from exposure to water soluble forms of mercury, such as uh, methyl mercury. Yeah, I know about that. Inhalation of mercury vapor or eating seafood can contaminate with, with mercury. Mercury is used in thermometers, barometers, manometers. <laughs> and the meters and float valves, mercury switches, mercury, oh, we know all that. Yeah. Well, now, you stated that a, it is, uh, certain types of mercury is water soluble. Well, the mercury um, uh, compound. Do you know how to come up with a name mercury? I know you talk about the God of the sea. Huh? I think that's God of the God because he's fast. He's very what's another name for Mercury? I don't know. Quicksilver. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, everybody they come up with the name of Mercury is supposed to be the, the fleetest of foot of the ancient Greeks, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, that's the reason they named it Mercury. And that's why Ford made Mercury. Right. Now there's I guess if they could discover a real slow moving type of element, they'll probably name it uh, Clodhopper. Name it Slouch. <laughs> Used to have a teacher who couldn't read and she was talking about them there sloths. Sloths. She called them slouches. Okay, a sleuth, <laughs> sloth, Slouch. whatever. Anyhow. You know them old slouches, they just stay away about 15 minutes a day. They get up and go pee and eat and go back and pee. <laughs> I guess most of this stuff is yeah. useless trivia. Uh, we might as well have some fun. Yeah. I guess we'll have some fun tonight. We've got about two minutes left yep. here. Uh, I guess we'll have some fun tonight when we see the results from the uh, We're a election for you, coming uh, in. Uh, Virgil. So, uh, so don't expect any dramatic uh, changes in the course of this country to make a difference. Who gets elected? Well, I would agree with you, Bob. I don't think, I think this country is... It's kind of like a, a planet or whatever, the mass of it. Or a, let me put it like this. It's kind of like a runaway train. You're not going to stop it or turn it no Yeah, quick. speaking of runaway trains, this train's fixing runaway. See, folks.